back to part two of the Martin guide. What you are looking at here is four and a half years of in-game times progress. If you haven't watched the first video, it was a video on how to play very slowly, very, should I say cautiously, with few officers, few resources, but from a very defensible position. Well, 10 starts with a very good core of officers, but without the resources or the means of improving his city to get those resources due to his lack of officers. He also lacks uh, a good strategist at the start, and you have very means, very little means of acquiring one early on. To recap, started off with Wu Wei and Tian Shui. Once Le Jue, emptied out Anding to take one, we took Anding. Went Li Jue, emptied out Chang An to reinforce one, we took Chang An. At which point with Chang An and with multiple events firing where the Chiang tribes which we are allied with provided us with reinforcements along with the volunteers event, we were in a position where we could take Luo Yang, we had a skirmish with Cao Cao after taking the city, and we spent what little troops we had remaining taking Hu Lao Gate. We also, towards the end of the video, acquired Sima Yi and the Sword of Sovereignty, so we now have a full strength Ma Chao, and once he recovers from his wounds, a hundred intelligent strategist. The plan going forward, and this won't be another four year plan, this will be the final part of the video, will to be reinforce the Hulao Gate, which I am going to delegate to Pang De, who has Goat Goose Formation and will be able to hold off the city by himself. In addition to that, we are then going to take our forces in Chang'an, take the Wu Gate and move on to Wan, after which we will be taking Chen Liu, not Chen Liu, Xu Cheng, Chen Liu, and depending on if Cao Cao's expanded, Hu Yang and Xiao Pei. Once we've taken out Cao Cao, I'll consider this um, a successful video, a successful guide, as once you've acquired Cao Cao's core officers, you can rely on my Cao Cao guide on how you can fight every force on the map at once effectively and win. So. I am now going to move around a few troops, a few officers. Panda is already in the Hulao Gate. I am going to send 2,000 troops along from the Hula, from Chang'an to the Hulao Gate, so it will be safe against any attack from Chen Liu, Sao Sao decides to make. And I am going to regroup my offensive corps, Ma Chao, Ma De, Ma Tang, in Chang'an, in, anticipa in anticipation, I should say, from the, for the attack on the Wu Gate. But uh, before I pause, I want to highlight, given that we have just taken Luoyang, Sili, we now have five cities and two provinces in full, including Liang and Sili. We now have an adjudicant slot, which I am going to switch up between Ma Chao and Sima Yi. Sima Yi's directly controlled tactic makes attacking cities a walk in the park, but Ma Chao's directly controlled tactic, which I'm hoping to be able to highlight, will let us win any skirmish, any battle where the enemy deploys troops. And just to highlight what I've done with the administration, I've switched uh, our scheme slot to research adherence, so uh, the Hulao Gate will do additional damage to Cao Cao's troops. I've also put in Pangda in the support slot so the Hulao Gate will recover quicker. And I am think I'm going to switch out promote areas with promote register, so we are hiring additional troops. So we have our first example here of what I'm hoping the Hulao Gate will be able to pull off for us. We have Sao Ren and Yue Jin coming to attack. And I am hoping to see what Panda can do with very little troops. Knowing I have 10,000 on the way, I'm hoping this will uh, this will last up until the reinforcements come. So, what we have to look at is the space immediately outside of the Hulao Gate. It is only surrounded by one uh, core territory of 
so 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 if I were to deploy an arrow formation unit of 3,000 troops in that space preventing you are Jin from walking into the city. While Sao Ren will do a fair bit of damage, I think Pang De will be able to put up a reasonable defense, allowing for these reinforcements to get there in time. So these troops will be sacrificed, but by the time the troops are in there, Pang De can redeploy in the rear in goose formation. The important part of this plan is to get the durability of the Hula Gate up as quickly as possible. Okay, let's see if this works. Yeah, so Pangda is taking quite a few... Oh! And even allowed for the potential of a duel, so Pangda is taking quite a bit of damage there. Of course he wins the duel. But he has nothing, I think, to worry about. His unit might die, but at the same time, these two units he's attacking aren't going to make it. And the city remains scratched, but mostly unharmed. And he's retreating. So it didn't even come to that. And there is the Hulao Gate defended. We lost... 2,500 troops, not included the wounded, but we took out uh, 6,000 of Sao Sao, so not a terrible ratio. So I'm hoping to show off here what a different Sima Yi can make on attacking gates, for example. If this works as it should. There we are, the gate is now confused. And provoked, so I can move Sima Yi out of the way, move in Marde, and he will not be hammered by casualties. This is one particular gate which is an absolute nightmare to attack, because you can only have one adjacent officer at any time. You want to move in there? Can't. Want to move in there? Can't. It's a one person at a time job. Okay, it didn't work as well as I thought it would, oh well. Tried. At least the durability of the gate is quite low. We are probably going to lose most of Marde's troops, but it unfortunately can't be helped. We're getting there. Could have gone worse. Attacking gates is always a pain, but that went as painlessly as they can go. So the next step is taking Wan, which is a bit of an awkward city to attack as it has six supporting cores, so you do have to take your time at least taking three of them, ideally four, unless you want to bleed casualties if the enemy deploys against you. Okay, with everything in position, I am now going to send out my units in arrow formation so I can do a quick sweep of the surrounding cores before attacking the city. Why thank you Liu Bei for the free gold, how entirely unexpected of you. So I'm building this camp here to make sure that while I'm circling these more extended cores, the enemy doesn't deploy and cut me off from the gates, which I've had happen on more than one occasion in different playthroughs.
Part of the idea of taking it slow is also to retain troops for when I move, make the move on South Sow. And oh, okay. Oh, okay, come on. This is a potential opportunity to show off what we can do with Ma Chow. That's a rank I don't believe that actually does anything unless I'm mistaken. No, I am completely mistaken. So, if we have a quick look at the title screen, no, the rank screen, sorry, Lieutenant Colonel, which gives you two adjudicants, and the ability to do surround and conquer, quite notably. That's something to remember, you can't always do this well when ranked. Five cities, two provinces. Whereas, regional governor was three cities and one province. Hmm. Okay, so this is very helpful as I can have Sima Yi and Ma Chao active at all times. So, what we are going to try and do here now is bait them into attacking me on my territory and hopefully and use my tactic to kill them all in one single move. Just to show off um, how powerful Ma Chao can be, of course, assuming this is how it works, or if it works as intended. So I'm just going to finish up the domestics and let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, let's slow this down. See if I activate it now, it hits two of them. I need that guy to get into, uh, into position. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, he's going to die before it happens anyway. So, let's see how well this does. Not quite a one shot. But close. I did lose 3,000 troops, but Ma Chao was by himself and he is sat in fire. Never helps. Okay, he hasn't given up yet, so we might see round two. No, he is turning around and running away. I think that was the... Ooh, hold on. Am I under attack? I am. Oh, what are you doing? Ooh, I didn't mean to hit it. I didn't mean to hit next turn. Ooh, ooh. Get out of there, Mark Tang. Get out of there. Oh, this is bad. At least I've just sent reinforcing troops. Welcome. So. Hmm, hold on. Surround and conquer. Okay, this could work. It's the plan. Get Martang out of there. Marde, you can wait there. You move over to reinforce. He can't come onto our land in 1v3s, free, one free, yes, I am sure. The danger is I move out and these tiles get taken back, cutting Ma Chao out. But I am going to have to take that risk. And... hmm. So my morale is quite low here. Should be able to fix that. Alright, let's see, let's see. We can hold out, just about. 
So if I bring my Yan Malu in, as long as he doesn't use his tactic that does AoE damage, we will be fine. And Ma Chao can take that and come to reinforce. Well, that's not going to be brilliant. As long as I'm not captured, I'm injured, which doesn't help, and Marteng is dead, which also doesn't help. However, that's half the city's troops down. And that more or less wins it for us, I think. So if I ask Marcha to retreat, what am I doing on troops? This should be fine. We lost a fair amount, but we have completely captured Wan, which means once I have this city taken, it'll be um, available right away for pumping out troops. Okay, this will do. I mean, I think if we take a look at the city now. Troop income 153. We have uh, nothing to worry about. So I am going to pause and return once I am ready for my final assault. This should quite literally be a walk in the park or as close as to one as you can get in this game, especially if the AI deploys 5,000 of their troops just before my attack starts. That always helps. Getting into position during these city attacks, or in the mountainside city attacks always is a little bit of a pain. It takes several turns to get where you want to be, but we'll manage just fine. So, let's see how many turns this takes. I am expecting two. Iron wall ready for what and the confusion wears off so Mar Chow stops taking damage, but doesn't even look like it's gonna be necessary. There we are. And that is how useful these officers with the direct control disorder tactics are when they have high intelligence. Chu Gu Liang, Sima Yi, Cho Yu. If there is anyone else, I am forgetting them from the moment, but those are the big three. I think I took 2,000 casualties during that attack. You take it slow and you can you can manage as well as that. There we are, not bad at all. So I now have 38 additional officers. So then obviously the next few turns are going to be spent hiring them rebalancing them across my city, or cities I should say, and the days of having to juggle the public order around. Awesome. Just to give context, those are now long over. And I can now operate Chang'an, Luoyang, and Wan at full capacity, and those are three of the best cities in the game. So at this point, we are pretty much the strongest force on the map. 
If you ignore Liu Chang, who just sits there in the corner, building up his troops, not really doing anything with them. But 50,000 troops there in Yong'an, and he can't march down and take Jianliang. It's embarrassing, really. However, 70,000 in Zitong, 30,000 in Bashui Gate. It's obscene. Oh, well, getting distracted. I am now going to hire absolutely everyone I can, rebalance, and we'll decide whether we go for Xu Chang or Chen Liu first shortly. So I'm still in the process of moving officers around and I've been weighing up what do I do with all this gold. I haven't made any sworn siblings yet and I think I am going to go all in on Ma Chao while looking to boost Sima Yi a little bit. So by doing this it gives Sima Yi and Pangda a little bit of confidant boost because they are without friends at the moment unfortunately so this will make their units a little stronger and they are otherwise very good officers so I figured this helps boost March out further and makes the other two units more viable. So just before 200 hits I've moved all of these officers around, I've created a district in Liang now that it is completely secure this has been set on supporting District 1, which is my two cities on the front line. And this is where the game gets a lot easier. If we look at these officers I have here, I have uh, I have Zhu Huang, Jia Xu, Wenpin, Li Yang, Shang Chu, Meng Da. These are all very, very good officers. And Jia Xu, Zhang Zhe make uh, a partnership. Meng Da, Li Yan also make a partnership. Wen Pin in defense formation, in the sorry, ring formation, or even fish is always very good. This is a, a, a top tier frontline city by itself. And then in Hu Lao Gate, I have, oh, in fact, in uh, Luoyang, I've moved my main force. I've got Simi Yi, Ma Chao, Han Sui, Pang Dei, Meng, um, Ma Teng, the, the Ma family in total. So we are going to launch an assault on Chen Liu, and I'm going to leave Wan as it is now in case Liu Biao gets any uh, funny ideas. One thing to keep in mind when attacking Chen Liu from Hulao Gate is this is a very, very dangerous core to be fighting on. It is surrounded by four neighbouring cores belonging to Chen Liu, and if they come out and attack you here, they are going to be buffed up to maximum capacity, whereas you will only have the one supporting core in Hulao Gate. So, as soon as you have this tile, make a move for Wei Shi, for the port, for Fen Qi, I would say arguably Weishi. However, before you do that, I always like to build a camp so the enemy cannot simply run towards the gate and cut you off. Just something to keep in mind. Wait. I'm feeling a little anxious about leaving uh, leaving my attacking force this undefended on the flank, so I'm sending out the Chiang units to quickly take a few of these neighbouring cores, build up a camp, to hit them from both sides effectively, so I'm not going to find myself flanked and uh, severely punished. You'll find the central plain cities, even though they're very wide open and exposed, they are quite defensive due to the game mechanics of how the core system works. If we look at any of these tiles I'm sitting on, that's quite uh, that's quite well reinforced by Sao Sao, even that one even more so, even this one here, even this one here. So there isn't really a an area you can sit on where you can feel relatively safe and well defended. So you do have to play very very carefully if you're not outnumbering Sao Sao 4 to 1, 5 to 1 because his officer quality means if he has the officers in the right place he can quite easily destroy you. I think with Sao Sao out at Pu Yang I can afford, and Sao Ren in fact his two best officers, I can afford to be a little brave. Ooh, and he's just had these units eliminated thanks to Lu Bu who is he hasn't got long left either. So, with Sao Sao oh, dead, he's going to be returning to the city now. Somewhat out of action? Yeah. I still have to be careful, because his ability to buff his supporting officers is still without rival in the game. 
and like I've been doing previously, always build up the, the surrounding cores just to make sure that you're not going to get ambushed and that's, you know, ends up in disaster. <laughs> I'm feeling, if not brave, a little reckless. Let's see if this ends in disaster. I could be saying goodbye to 5,000 troops here. I don't doubt that that might very well happen. But I'm going to go for it. Nothing ventured, uh, nothing gained. Also, I've deployed Han Sui in our formation. He has a dash and vantage crowns, which... Ooh. Okay. What did we do? What did we do? I completely missed that. Looks like he sent out uh, a no-named officer and we... Sorry, and we absolutely destroyed him. This is where playing slow does does pay off, so it looks like we did a little bit of damage to where we sent out, and our reward will be the city, or the core. Hmm. You know, I think at this point I am strong enough to make a direct assault without having to worry about maximising everything, so... You go there. You go there. Let's get everyone ready. And so I can continue doing his thing. I have a feeling we might be bringing this video to a close far sooner than I anticipated. Let's see if it goes this well. Yep, no further problems in Xu Chang. Cao Cao's on the retreat, he sees I've deployed for him. Will Xu Chu take the bait and go for Han Sui, however? That is the question. And I think, if he's arrived, yes. Always remember to keep your famous officers in the frontline city so you can assign them when you're attacking. In Wan, I have no famous officers or even any charismatic officers, so this is sadly the best I can do. I think with Su Chu retreating, he may very well want to want to head straight into me. Assuming he did come from Chen Liu and not Xu Chang. And I am doing, um, I think it's safe to say, quite well. Hmm. I've got Sima Yi on the flanks. So that he can uh, hopefully get off his tactic for anyone that approaches. If I move Pound over, yeah, he'll be in reinforcement range of both Sima Yi and Ma Chao. You can see the difference not having any supportive units or wives makes. Even at these troop counts, even with these supporting tiles, compared to my Sunset campaign, 1200, 1200 is hardly, hardly an eye-watering attack stat, or defense stat. So I think he is retreating into Xu Chang, so I'm going to take the bold step of trying to cut across and prevent him from entering the city. As, okay, March out is almost certainly going to march out now and break our formation, but... Okay, this should do a fair bit of damage to him. Four-way chain tactic. 9,000! That is a fair bit of damage. Okay, so that probably gets us the city. Can't see... 
can't see it causing any issues there. So. They attack that, take you, and I think we are in a very healthy position. Very healthy position. Supplies are continuing to come our way. Oh, look at that, Chang'an. 27,000 troops. I know where those are going. And in fact, 9,000. She's low morale, so. Where are you? Send her out with the 9,000 and my instrumentalist to build the morale up. So, Zushi's uh, trait doesn't boost the stats of your officers, it lowers the stats of enemy uh, male officers, which, in my opinion, isn't quite as good because the multipliers don't take effect. But it's still not terrible. And we've not been cut off yet, so we go for you, and then we go for Yan Lin. And I think we are very nearly ready. It's looking like we have Sao Sao on the ropes. He's not deploying. And Yuan Shu, who's still alive in the year 200. Oh, look at that, look at that. Is eyeing things up. So, we are most definitely going to take this city. I think we need one more turn, and we know what's going to happen when Yong Chi falls. <sighs> 1600 defense. <laughs> Okay, so now we move in. Sure. Sure. Look at that damage, and we haven't even got a siege weapon. Siege weapon or Pang Den <laughs> position, because I forgot to move him. Now, this is the March Owl experience you want. You are doing 9,000 damage to a single unit, and it's AoE. So if Sao Sao had multiple units there, we would have done 9,000 apiece. You are, you are as strong as can be, you have dash, you are as quick as can be, you get into duels, you're going to win them, and with the duelist trait, you're going to get fairly frequent duels. Unfortunately, with this scenario, it just takes you so long to get to this point, and by the time you're here, there's no one who can even threaten you. Will you be out, maybe? Sun Sir? Well, Sun, Sun Chuan, Sun Sir is dead now, it being the year 200. Yuan Shao, there isn't really a threat at all.
That only took six years. Yeah, literally six years. One down. Really does look like we're in clean up stage. So Chen Liu is already fairly built up, fairly safe, and Zhu Chang I've been making the necessary measures to effectively get it ready for uh, for our next attack. So I'm going to move these troops in and then 50,000 supplies. I think we'll just. No! Tell you what, we're not going in the city. Who's gone inside Pangda? We're moving straight on to Zhu Cheng. There is no need to, uh, we took so little damage, there's no need to recuperate, we'll just go straight for the city. Should I position this? I think I will move these out of the way to make room for the Marfles. <clears throat> Not that I think it's really going to be needed. So we have the main Sao force here Sao Sao, Sha Ho Dun, Sha Ho Yuan. The whole gang is in this city, as far as I'm aware, anyway. So if we take a look. Sha Ho Dun, Sha Ho Yuan, Sao Sao. No Sao Hong. Ah, oh, captured Sao Hong. Dian Wei. Guo Jia, Shen Yu, Chen Yu, Sao Pi. There's a lot you could do. However, there's also a lot I can do, and that's exactly what's going to happen in a few turns. I think my supplies are okay. Okay within reason. But I've got plenty of reinforcements. Man Chang. Oh no, Sao Ren's in my prison. Does he have anything I want? And we are Sword of Heaven. Nice little strength boost, some for Martang. And he walked into the range of the city. I think this is the most I've ever really made use of Surround and Conquer, but I think it makes a very good example. So get over there, get in there, get in there. New guys, I uh, can attack in the flanks. It's always a sign you're doing well when random factions start gifting you. So. Mm, no. Yeah, sure, why not? Here. 
，交给我吧。有使者求见。It's like a switch is flipped, and the AI now knows I am the dominant force. All the way this, the damage is being spread. Turns, and this is a large city. Shu Chang, medium. And we're done. There goes Sao Sao. History has been inverted. <laughs> And we have Sao Sao himself voluntarily. So there we are. We are Marteng, and we have conquered Sao Sao. There is now very little on this map that could stop us. I could send out Sao Sao's forces to the south, Marteng's to the east, and we would still have plenty of quality officers to defend ourselves. We have most of the best cities in the central plains already. We have more troops than we can almost use, really. All the supplies in the world, more gold than we can now make use of. And I would consider this a success. If you're watching and you want a part three of this, just to show off what you can do once you're Marteng in this position, I wouldn't object to considering a, a, you know, recording a part three. But I think at this point, this explains how you play as Marteng on veteran difficulty. It's quite frustrating. Is you are too weak to do anything for half the time you play, and then you are so strong you are wiping out the strongest faction on the map without great difficulty. Most of what it comes down to is diplomacy. Wait for the other factions to have a window open for you to attack them with the numbers advantage. Play very, very carefully around the core provinces. Make sure you're never attacking a city without complete control, and eventually you'll find yourself in a position where your supplies, your troops, are building up faster than you're expiring. So、um, I hope you've enjoyed this, and、um, I hope you, in particular, enjoyed the very brief window into what you can do with Ma Chao if the enemy. Uh, decides to attack you. He is one of the best officers in the game for that reason. His only restriction is he's stuck in a fairly bad faction that only gets to shine once you're in a position of dominance. But、uh, maybe if you're playing one of the later scenarios,、uh, Liu Bei attacking or Liu Bei in Shu、uh, attacking Cao Cao and Han Zhong, that would be your best opportunity to make use of Ma Teng, I think. But、um, I hope this has been this has been helpful, regardless. And、um, I know I said I was only going to do a, a, a one parter for this video following the Sunset campaign, but I think spreading six years over two videos isn't the end of the world. As for the next one, I think I am approaching the end of the 194 scenario factions I want to play. I might do Liu Bei. However, I know I want to play Liu Bei in 198. I'm not going to do Liu Biao, as I think Liu Biao plays the same as he does in, say, 198 or even or even 207. But with、uh, uh, more options, so I think、uh, it's a more fun experience playing Liu Biao in 207 compared to 194, and I think it's.、Uh, It's more fun playing Liu Chang in the Liu Bei enters Shu scenario, which I think is 2:11. I might do a video talking about Yuan Shu, talking about Yuan Shao. I might even do a Yuan, sorry, Yuan Shu video. 
<laughs> yeah, I probably probably will. I, I won't do a Lich US video, and I won't do a Yuan Shao video, as the faction's effectively too strong to really demonstrate anything, even on veteran difficulty. You're starting in a very strong position with an overwhelming amount of troops, but maybe I'll do a short video or a summary video talking about different factions I haven't recorded something for. Anyway, I'm rambling on now. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and leave a comment feedback at all if you think there's anything I should have done differently, any questions you might have, or anything of that nature. 